Whether it's a sci-fi thriller taking place on a made-up alien planet or a simple romantic comedy, feature-length Hollywood movies are widely known to have a budget of several tens of millions of dollars, often even hundreds of millions. Sure, big name actors and special effects can be expensive, but that's not all that movies need. So why do Hollywood movies cost so damn much to make? It is common trivial knowledge that, while James Cameron's Titanic, often cited as the most expensive movie ever made, costs around $200 million to produce, the actual RMS Titanic costs $300 million in today's money. This is not to say that they might as well have rebuilt the real ship. There are numerous costs and fees to making a movie. For the sake of explanation, I will not be adding up each individual cost like in one Over Productions this video on why flying is so expensive, but I will instead be bringing up some major things that professional blockbuster movies often have that jacks up the price. Arguably the most important part of a live action movie is of course the camera, and some cinematic cameras can cost up to tens of thousands of dollars just to rent. Some sources say that an IMAX camera, for example, a really good camera of course, can cost twelve dollars to $16,000 per week of rental, and movies aren't Canubus Productions videos in that they could never be filmed in another week. Next up is the set, which can either be built in a studio or shot in real life. Either one will still probably require some extra CGI to tie everything together. Of course, each method of set design has its own requirements. For filming on location, there are obvious costs in transporting all the crew and equipment, which we'll get into later on, or in hiring new crew and running new equipment in the other country, as well as with filming permits for certain areas. That is, of course, unless you're in this area around Los Angeles, the so-called studio area, which is likely why this rock formation is so well known in science fiction. If those rocks were on the other side of the line, they probably wouldn't be too well known, as it wouldn't be very cost effective to film there. Obviously, sets also have their own costs, notably construction and rental, even if it is just a bunch of harnesses and green screens. Another big cost is people, which is a big one, considering how long productions may take. Of course, you need actors, producers, and directors, but you also need set designers, light and sound experts, stunt doubles, cinematographers, electricians to power all that gear, editors, extras, costume designers, art directors, and this isn't even mentioning how movies generally tend to have their own soundtracks, often by big name musicians like Hans Zimmer or Michael Giacchino. This is of course a lot of people, and they need to be paid for the entire time that they're there since the movie, for a lot of these people, is kind of like a temporary job. Of course, big name also means big pay. Like, for some of the actors, a couple million big pay. Oh, and you also need to provide things like trailers, food, and transport, and all that stuff. What about animated movies, though? Surely they don't need a full count- oh, right, voice actors. While animated movies may not need cinematographers and set constructions, they still do need designers, animators, voice actors, and all the components that go into making the story itself. After all, you can't have a story without a story. Animated movies aren't actually any cheaper than live action movies. In fact, if we cherry pick two random examples, The Martian had a budget of 108 million, while How to Train Your Dragon had a budget of 165 million. Of course, animated movies are technically entirely CGI, so there's that. There's also one more component that comes out just before and just after a movie's release that you may or may not have previously considered. Marketing. Movies, in order to be successful enough to make a profit in theaters and sales, need to put word out of the movie's release, which often means major ad campaigns. This can be anything from commercials to cross promos to billboards to metro seat displays that look absolutely terrifying out of context. So that's basically what you need to take into account. Once again, I'm really nothing more than someone who's been pondering the same question themselves, so I've linked a couple really helpful videos in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll finally see you next Sunday.